morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from Cedar Key, Florida. Well, today's verse is Matthew 6.30. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Now, Remember, this is coming in that section where Jesus is reassuring us that if we really do put our 100% faith in him, that he could have it all, that he will make sure that our needs are met. And that's coming in this section here. Now remember last week's verse, and I have the link right up there. I mentioned that uh, there are, we're not going to walk around like Solomon, dressed in the fanciest clothes necessarily, nor are we going to necessarily eat the finest foods, but our necessities will be met. And in this verse, it says, will he not much more clothe you? I want to make sure that there is something that's clear here. There is a movement, or probably more than one, the prosperity movement, and it goes under other names, that basically negates this. It says you can have it all. You can have luxury. You can have glorious things here on earth. And you should pray for the fancy cars and the fancy food and the best job and the right girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, or whatever. Uh, that you can have health and wealth and anything you want here on earth. And they'll use verses that seem to indicate that. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the Lord, and we're a child of the king, therefore we should live like kings. Or even this, will he not much more clothe you than he will the flowers, the beautiful flowers, who are more beautiful than even Solomon. But again, that is an incorrect understanding. In fact, it's beyond incorrect. I would call it evil. That it is based on the things of the earth. All of the riches that God talks about and clothing us more than the flowers and everything else, that is the heavenly riches. That is not the earthly stuff. So our focus should be on the heavenly riches and not the pursuit of the earthly ones. Let's learn another lesson from these flowers. In James 1.11, and the context is in the humble and the rich, it says, For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, and its flower falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too, the rich man, in the midst of his pursuits, will fade away. So these beautiful, beautiful flowers can wither away with a hot sun. And same with the rich man in his pursuits. What pursuits? The pursuits of wealth instead of the pursuit of God. Now there's nothing wrong with having a lot of money if it's from God, but if we are pursuing that and that is our main pursuit, then we've got the wrong perspective. So we've got to make sure that we've we're chasing the right thing, the things of heaven. Now back to our main verse. At the end, it says what sounds like a rebuke. You of little faith. And Jesus says this a number of times throughout the four Gospels. Oh, you of little faith. And it sounds like a terrible thing to say. After studying this, I'm not 100% sure that this is a rebuke. It might just be an idiomatic expression such as mere mortals or something like that. Just something about humans and their innate weakness. Humans have little faith. I have little faith. But it's okay. All we need is the faith of the size of a mustard seed. Think of the little boy who had nothing more than a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread. He gave it all to Jesus, and with that they were able to feed thousands. Same thing here. We might have a little faith, but if we give it all to him, he's going to accomplish much, and we will have those riches in heaven. Because if we love every moment, we're going to love every moment. I'm your average wretch, and I hope you have a great week. Bye.